Earning over six figures in a single year is a goal that lots of motivated people try to achieve. It will be easier for some depending on the career path they choose, but once they reach this milestone, there are some certain things they should be attempting to do with the money that they're bringing in to set them up for the rest of their lives. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Reese, and in today's video, I am talking about some very important steps and considerations that should be made once you start to earn above six figures. Breaking this barrier was an exciting moment for me. It was a goal that I had set out to achieve and was fortunate enough to be given the opportunity to do it relatively early in my career. And at that time, I did not have many expenses. This saw me sitting on what I would call a silly amount of cash or excess cash every time payday rolled around. So instead of throwing that excess cash away by simply spending it, I decided that it was probably a wise idea to allocate a portion. Now looking back, it was a large portion, but a portion of that money for specific purposes that would benefit me in the future as I got older and started to approach retirement, which I guess where I'm at in the timeline right now is still in the early days, but the plan as it sits seems to be like a relatively good one. So here are some of the things that I have personally done since I hit this milestone and what I plan to do as my salary can continues to grow over time as well. The first and most important thing I believe I did once I hit the six figure salary range was to ground myself. I set a realistic budget based on my lifestyle, my goals, and my income. This allowed me to enjoy my money within reason. Keyword there, within reason. And it stopped me from getting caught up in what is known as lifestyle inflation. I have actually made videos discussing the common traps and pitfalls that people fall into when their salary increases to a point where they have expendable income. And I think you might get some value out of watching them. I have linked them down below for your convenience. So now would be a good time to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the videos I release that directly tie into ones like this. After all, this channel is about creating a big story that is intertwined with real world examples of how to approach finance depending on your own individual situation. The next thing I did using my newly defined budget was to actually start using the excess income I was bringing in to begin building my wealth instead of just hoarding cash. And I wanted to remove decision-making from the process to essentially automate it. And a good example of how I automate this process would be how I break down my bank accounts. I use a five bank account system, which has been tailored from many suggestions from lots of different locations. I'll just name one example being The Barefoot Investor, a very popular book that sold millions of copies here in Australia. I highly recommend giving it a read. I've also left a link to it down in the description below. My bank account system is set up something like this. Out of the money that goes into my bank accounts, I divert 15% to my spending account, which lets me spend freely on things that are generally considered leisure activities or leisure items or luxury items, if you want to call it a luxury item. 25% goes to my bills account, which is strictly for fixed expenses, things that I must spend money on to survive. I try to save 50% of my wage. Generally, all of my house costs go into that specific account and come out of that specific account because that is my general big savings. I have 10% going into my fun account, which is to put towards things like holidays and more bigger luxury purchases. An example would be a car and I put $50 a fortnight into my emergency fund and have done so consistently now for almost five years. So it started to build up to a point where I'm very comfortable in having that buffer in an emergency. Now, one thing to note out of this setup is I have a bills account, which I cap at $3,000. I worked out how much all of my bills combined are and make sure that I put more into that account every time I'm paid to basically prepare or foresee future expenses. So with the excess money that's going in there, once I hit that $3,000 cap, I am taking that out once it hits a certain number. At the moment, it's about $5,000 and I am deciding to invest that into shares. I think it's a good way to build a savings account basically, or to save money for this purpose. Now, I have found this system to be extremely useful for one reason in particular. As my salary increases, those percentages don't really need to change, but the rate of savings changes dramatically. And I get a little bit of extra spending money because 15% of $1,000 is $150 in a fortnight. 15% of $2,000 is double that, meaning I get access to more money in each account, which then saves faster for those intended purposes instead of just treating the new salary 
whatever I'm bringing in that's the new income as free spending money, which I know a lot of people who do run their finances that way. They look at a pay rise as an opportunity to increase their spending money to the max. I personally think that the system I use has been incredibly effective at me diverting money into specific goals that I've had over the past 10 years, which has led me to the current life and lifestyle that I'm able to live. It essentially creates a sense of forced savings where I can take the decision making out of where that money has to go every time I'm paid. I just allocate the certain amounts or set amounts to those accounts. And then I have a set of rules which allows me to withdraw from them. One example being a bill. A bill is a fixed expense. What's an, a fixed expense? Let's go with petrol. I must put petrol in my car to drive from A to B, to go to work, to be able to function as a human being. I have to go places and I need to get there. My car is a fixed expense. Another good example would be any type of utility within my home, water. Without it, I can't survive. Therefore, it comes out of my bills account. Very clear cut defined rules. Whereas if I wanted to buy it, let's say a board game, that is a luxury item. I do not need that to live. That would come out of my spending money. And because I have a system where I budget and don't overspend, I know what I can spend and when I can spend it. And it has worked pretty effectively, like I said, over the past almost 12 years now. I started when I was 14, a little bit more than that. I don't even wanna do quick maths. The point is it's a system that has been pretty effective over the course of my life. Moving on from that, another important thing that I am doing is trying to plan ahead. Being in my late twenties, I'm starting to try and have the foresight that when I'm 60, I'm definitely going to thank me right now in my late twenties for taking some steps to plan ahead big time. Within Australia, we have something called superannuation. This is similar to a 401k in the United States. And the way it works in simple terms is our employers have to pay a percentage of our income or our earnings into our super funds. And we can choose to do something called salary sacrificing, where we sacrifice a portion of what we earn, our take home pay, and that gets put into our super fund. The purpose of the super fund is to grow over time because it's essentially a big investment fund where they take our money and invest it for us wisely fingers crossed. And when you retire, you get access to this super fund and can live out the rest of your days without relying on a pension. In Australia, I can salary sacrifice, including what my employer gives me up to $27,500. So when you start reaching these types of salaries in the six figures where you might not necessarily need access to all of this expendable cash, it can be beneficial to consider actually putting some of that money or salary sacrificing some of that money into your superannuation fund because it does two things. It builds your future. It builds the wealth for your future. So when you do eventually retire, you can retire without that reliance on the pension, like I just said. And it also reduces your taxable income right now. So there are tax brackets. Again, I've talked about them. Have a look through my videos if you're interested in learning about that within Australia. But the point here is, is it's always a good idea to reduce your tax if it's something that is going to be beneficial to you. Generally, it is especially if you're saving for something like your retirement and you have the luxury of being able to do that. And just one other consideration I want to slide in here for this little section of the video is once you earn over $90,000 currently within Australia, it is worth taking out private health insurance to avoid what's known as the Medicare levy surcharge. I've made a video about it. You can find it on my channel if you're interested in finding out more if you are an Australian and you earn over $90,000 a year. And finally, the last thing that I wanna to touch on today is something that I have continued to do, but I've noticed it's become more common as my salary has started to increase. And that is that I have purchased somewhat expensive items. And then I, this is the important one, take care of them as I continue to use these items. To be clear, these aren't wasteful purchases. These are purchases that have added value to my life. I believe they've added value to my life. And it's important for me to put this on paper because I need to justify this in a way that might make sense to some people who would consider doing the opposite and purchasing multiple of something that isn't necessarily as expensive instead of purchasing one nice thing. I'm going to use just one example. My laptop sitting right in front of me, I have had it since 2014. It is a MacBook Pro, it is top spec or was top spec at the time of purchase. Now this is what I would call an item of quality. I spent good money on it and I have used it throughout the last seven years of my life and it has not had a single hiccup, thank the Lord. Now, the important thing again to understand is I've gone through a uni degree with this thing. I've recorded somewhere in the realm of 200 YouTube videos. I have used it for every leisure activity known to man, such as watching Netflix, writing my book, and just browsing the internet. Haha, -ha, jokes can be inserted within that set of comments. The point being that I have got a massive return on my initial investment of buying this 
item of quality. And since my salary has increased, it's become increasingly easier to justify these purchases. This is something I will probably continue to do well into the future. And I highly recommend if you are someone in a lucky enough position to be able to do it yourself, I highly highly encourage you to buy items of quality and take care of them. The take home from today's video is that realistically, no matter where you are in your career right now, your salary will continue to increase as you progress through that career. And if you do eventually get to this point where you are earning money that would be considered excess income, it's going to be a good idea for you to understand what to do with it versus wasting it, which I have seen, like I said, a lot of people do with one example is bonuses and pay rises. This is a great concept concept to get a grasp of and then to actually put it into practice once you start reaching those points in your career in your life if you're already there make some changes because ultimately you can still live a good life ultimately you can still have what you need and putting a little bit away for a rainy day is never going to be a bad idea on top of this it's also important to understand that putting it in a bank account and letting it collect dust right now at the time of recording this video is probably not your best move either the banks are being pretty stingy in what they're paying in terms of interest rates, your money can be used more wisely elsewhere, such as investing. And I'm not going into it today, but investing is just one idea that comes to mind. Living a comfortable life is important to most people and having the opportunity to set yourself up financially should be motivation enough for you to actually give it a go. Not saying you don't, I just think that absolutely, if you're someone who could use a little bit of a push, this hopefully is it. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you took something from it. I hope it was insightful. If it was, don't forget to turn on bell notifications, leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. It really does help it grow and I really do appreciate the support. With that being said, I'll leave you there. Have a good day, have a good week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.